here and today we're covering the muscular system part two. Um, so first I wanted to record this entire PowerPoint and make one lecture, but it's really long. So I divided it into two parts um, and I will link the first recording below um, this video. So you will find the, the link to my first part in the description um, section for this second video. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's kind of like, I don't know, every time when I start recording video, I get so nervous um, and uh, I'm sorry for that. I do appreciate you guys are patient and you watching this video and hopefully uh, they help you to learn the material. So that's where we're gonna start. So let me scroll to the point where we stop. This is where we stop, gluteal region superficial muscles. I just want to remind you that we have um, 650 muscles and muscles are in layers. Um, you have superficial muscles, uh, intermediate, deep muscles. That's why we have so many of them. Now, if you look at the thigh and the superficial region, you will find gluteus maximus. Um, so uh, first, um, this group, the abductors of the thigh. Abduct means take away from midline. So gluteus maximus also laterally rotate thigh. Gluteus medius medially rotate thigh. Plus, of course, it's an abductor. Gluteus minimus also medially rotates thigh and tensor fascia lata. And guess what? Also medially rotate. So we have one muscle gluteus maximus that laterally rotates. The rest of the superficial muscle abduct and medially rotate your thigh. Uh, so let's look at the diagram. Gluteus maximus. Superficial, oh, I'm sorry, superficial. Superior, superior to it is gluteus medius. And you need to remove this muscle to find gluteus minimus. So here's the gluteus minimus muscle. Uh, we have uh, other muscles that we will discuss in our lab. Let's just look at the uh, names right now. That's a piriformis muscle. Gemellus superior right here. And gemellus inferior. And between obturator internus, then this little muscle here is obturator externus, and the uh, most inferior muscle is quadratus femoris. Right. So these muscles again, we uh, we look at these muscles later. Muscle of the pelvic floor. Those muscles function um, as a pelvic diaphragm. So if you look at the pelvis, you know we have this outlet of the pelvis and there is opening over there, right? Like a hole. And what do you have in your pelvic region? Your reproductive organs, your rectum. And you, you don't want those muscles to descend. So you need a support. If you don't have a bony support, you must have muscle support. So that's our another diaphragm. You have your diaphragm that separates thoracic and abdominal cavity, and you have pelvic diaphragm. So function of pelvic diaphragm include it seals inferior outlet of pelvis, supports pelvic organs, lifts pelvic floor to help release feces, and resist increased intra-abdominal pressure. Um, and if we look at the group of muscles here, we can see that this uh, kind of like muscles in this area called urogenital diaphragm and uh, muscles right there, that's a pelvic diaphragm. So we have pelvic diaphragm and urogenital diaphragm and together they make pelvic floor. All right, so the muscles that we have, this is our piriformis muscle. Then 
uh, pelvic diaphragm that is made of coccygeus and levator ani muscle. This levator ani muscles. And um, levator ani muscles further are divided into ilia coccygeus and puba coccygeus. So puba coccygeus um, from pubic bone to coccyx, ilia coccygeus from ilium to the coccyx. Uh, you can also see obturator internus right there. So uh, it's a lot. Let's just remember a um, couple important points. So we have pelvic floor. Right, that is made of pelvic diaphragm and urogenital diaphragm and uh, functions of pelvic floor, right? Okay, so that's gonna be um, most important to take from this uh, slide. Now we're moving to thigh. Anterior compartment extends the knee, include sartorius muscle and quadriceps group. Quadriceps means four heads, but it's actually four muscles. Rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius. So let's look at this um, muscles here. Um, so this is the sartorius muscle, the one that crosses your thigh. This is pectineus. And uh, here is our quadriceps group. Right in the middle, you have rectus femoris. Now rectus means it's a straight muscle. Femoris tells you it's located in the femoral region. On the lateral side, vastus lateralis. On the medial, vastus medialis, and um, vastus intermedius, what you need to do, you need to remove this rectus femoris, and deep to this rectus femoris, you will have vastus intermedius. Um, also interesting here, um, this is your um, inguinal region, and you will find large arteries and veins, a femoral nerve, femoral artery, and femoral vein as well. So you will find in this region, femoral nerve, artery, and vein. Um, and those, they innervate your thigh and supply, of course, blood to your muscles and bones. Then we have a medial compartment. So anterior is on the anterior side. So it will be right there, medial towards the midline. And muscles in the medial compartment, they abductors of the thigh. So they bring your thigh towards the midline. So we include pectineus. So we already look at the pectineus. So I'll go back to show you pectineus again. Adductor longus, adductor brevis, adductor magnus, and gracilis. Um, now this one on, only show you this adductor groups. We have adductor brevis, adductor longus, and adductor magnus, and you can see a little bit of adductor magnus right here. Um, now to see pectineus and gracilis, we need to go back. So pectineus, I already showed you that that um, this is a pectineus right here. And gracilis muscle is this muscle right right there. So it's in the medial compartment. Remember, so it's shown here in a red color. And you can see adductors, uh, adductor longus that is cut, adductor brevis, and adductor magnus, um, kind of this part, this part over there underneath all this adductor longus and brevis.
So that's our type. Now posterior compartment, flex the knee. And it includes um, hamstring group. Hamstring is made of three muscles, bicep femoris on the lateral side, semi-tendinosis on the top and semi-membranosis on the medial side. Now, when I look at this membranosis, it has M. So that uh, helped me to remember that it's on the medial side. And semi-tendinosis has this T. That's how I remember it's on top. And if semimembranosis is medial, then bicep femoris is lateral. Okay, so let's look over here. So, so that's our uh, lateral side. So that's a lateral. So that's a midline of your body. So on the lateral side, posterior view, we have biceps femoris. Then semimembranosis shown here in yellow and on the top semitendinosis. Um, in this area, just underneath your gluteus maximus, you will find the biggest nerve in your body called sciatic nerve. And as a muscle, just the like sciatic nerve just uh, comes underneath the muscles that called piriformis. Okay, so on this diagram, uh, you just can look again at anterior compartment, you have quadriceps, and on the posterior compartment, hamstrings. Muscle of um, the leg, anterior compartment, functions, dorsoflexion of foot and extension of toes. So remember, dorsoflexion is when you're working on your heels. Um, Tibialis anterior, so this is medial side, midline of your body. This bone is tibia. Uh, lateral to tibia bone is tibialis anterior. Then extensor hallucus longus, shown in purple, and you see tendon goes to hallux or big toe. And extensor digitorum longus, so it extends your digits or your toes and it has a long tendon. Right, so that's our anterior compartment. A lateral compartment, you will find um, three muscles, but only two we need to know, fibularis longus. So that's a midline, midline of your body. So that's a lateral side, fibularis longus and fibularis brevis, shown here in yellow color. Posterior compartment, uh, plantar flexion. So when you walk on your toes, that's plantar flexion. Superficial, we have plantaris. It's, um, it's a, a muscle shown here a little bit, but um, to see it better, you need to um, dissect the way gastronemia. So that's the biggest muscle, you call it calf muscle. That's your gastronemias. Underneath the gastronemias, you have soleus. So here, gastronemia is shown in yellow color and it's um, dissected away. So you don't see it here. And underneath is soleus. Soleus and gastronemias insert into calcaneal bo uh, bone through calcaneal tendon. Insert to calcaneus through calcaneal tendon that you call Achilles tendon. And here's your plantaris in the, um, also in, in this popliteal region. It's called a uh, freshman nerve because it has like really, really long tendons that goes all the way down to your uh, soul or plantar region and very often confused, oops, with the nerve. Sorry. Um, Posterior compartment still, so we just covered uh, gastronemias, soleus, um, those are superficial, but you have deep compartment. So if you remove the superficial, you have popliteus or popliteus, that's in the popliteal region. And then we have tibialis posterior, Right, if you have tibialis anterior, 
makes sense that you have tibialis posterior. Tibialis posterior is in the middle. So that's a tibialis posterior. Now, this is your big toe. So that's a medial side. And this is lateral side. Now, on the both side of tibialis posterior, you have extensor digitorum longus on the medial side, and uh, I'm sorry, flexor, flexor digitorum longus, because extensors are in anterior compartment. Here we have flexor digitorum longus, flex your toes, and flexor hallucis longus on the lateral side, shown here in blue color, flexes your big toe. Now look, your big toe is actually here, your big toe, but flexor, muscle that flexes it is on the lateral side. So it's kind of like opposite. All right. And uh, intrinsic muscles of the foot, they flex, help flex, extend, abduct and adduct toes, support arches of foot, and some leg tendons um, assist as well. Um, we divided it into group. Uh, we divided it into dorsal group, right? So here's a dorsal group right there. It's extensor digitorum brevis. We had extensor digitorum longus, so now we have extensor digitorum brevis, and we have a plantar group. And plantar group includes uh, four layers of muscles. They are flexors and abductors of your toes. And we are not going to cover those muscles in um, uh, individual muscles, right? We just gonna call it plantar group. So we have dorsal group, pretty much only one muscle, and plantar group, we have superficial and deep muscles of plantar. Okay, so um, and um, now we're gonna look at the major nerves of our extremities uh, of the upper limb. Mm, so this is bone humerus radius and ulna. So we have radial nerve on the radial side. We have ulna nerve on the ulna side. Between them, we have median nerve in the middle. And kind of like shorter nerve here is muscular cutaneous. Now anterior um, leg and thigh, we have a femoral nerve and obturator. This big nerve over here is superficial called saphenous. In the posterior thigh and leg, we have the biggest nerve of your body, sciatic, and then sciatic gonna split, goes down as tibial nerve, and goes to the lateral side and to the front, superficial fibula and deep fibula. Right now, why those nerves are important? Because they innervate muscles of your arms and your legs. Um, if you look at this diagram, we have um, name of nerve. Source, it's um, because peripheral nerves, they originate from spinal nerves. So we're not going to look at the so, uh, source. Then over here, sensory innervation. That means information from your skin if somebody touches you, if you, if you have a cold, um, some cold touches your body, right? Or just a cold temperature, or if like a little insect crawling on your arm or leg, that's a sensory information goes to your brain. So we're not gonna look at sensory information. We're only interested in the modern information, uh, nerves that innervate muscles and allow them to move. So radial nerve, um, uh, that is uh, on the back and on the radial side of your arm and forearm. And it's innervate muscles that are located in the posterior compartment. So it's posterior compartment of your arm and forearm. And what do you have in the posterior compartment? Tricep, brachii, uh, and corneas, and all those muscles, uh, your extensors 
of the forearm. Musculocutaneous nerve innervate bicep brachii, brachialis, and caracobrachialis muscles. So they innervate muscles of anterior compartment of the arm. Then um, next one is median nerve. Um, so it's innervates a uh, flexor compartment of forearm, most of them, with uh, some exception. An exception is flexor carpi ulnaris, flexor digitorum profundus. In the uh, thinner muscles, um, remember thinner muscles, uh, um, the ball of your uh, thumb. Um, so flexors it means anterior compartment. So uh, media nerve innervate most of the muscles of your anterior forearm. And ulna nerve innervates um, these muscles that are exceptions, uh, flexor digitorum profundus, flexum carpi ulnaris, and hypothenar muscles, and most muscles of the hand. So just kind of like remember uh, at least basic information. Then radial nerve innervates posterior muscles of your arm and forearm. Musculocutaneous innervates anterior muscles of your arm. Median innervates anterior muscles of your forearm. And ulna mostly innervates muscles of your hand. Uh, femoral nerve, so we're moving to low extremities, innervate pectineus, muscle, sartorius, iliacus, uh, quadricep femoris. So out of all this, let's just remember that quadriceps femoris, right, that's uh, four muscles, an anterior compartment of the thigh, innervated by femoral nerve. And femoral nerve doesn't really innervate your leg. So to innervate so uh, 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 again, femoral nerve innervates anterior compartment of the thigh, and that's pretty much it. Now, posterior compartment of the thigh, anterior compartment of the leg, and posterior compartment of the leg will be innervated by um, sciatic nerve. Let me get uh, to it in a minute. So anterior compartment of the thigh, femoral nerve. Now, remember medial compartment, our adductor, up to radar nerve. Now, what is left now is posterior part of your thigh, posterior part of your leg, and anterior part of your leg innervated by sciatic nerve. And remember that sciatic nerve then uh, going to split into tibial nerve and superficial and deep fibula. And by the way, perineal is another name for fibula. Uh, so superficial fibula going to um, innervate um, the lateral, um, lateral part of the um, leg and deep fibula going to innervate anterior compartment of the leg and tibial innervate posterior compartment of the leg. Yeah, I know, right? It's like a lot, but let's just uh, uh, um, kind of the major Again, major information over here, maybe move to this uh, point. Um, so femoral nerve gonna innervate anterior compartment of the thigh. Up to radar nerve, medial compartment of the thigh. Now, if you look to the back, you have the biggest nerve. So it's gonna innervate all the posterior compartment, all the posterior compartment uh, of the thigh and leg lateral compartment and even anterior compartment of your leg. Now deep fibula innervate anterior, so it moves back to the front. Uh, superficial fibula gonna innervate lateral and tibial innervate posterior compartment. Okay, so that's it for um, the second part of our muscular system lecture. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope it was helpful. So now I'm trying to figure out how to stop my video. Okay. That's...
Okay, well, just um, stay with me for a minute. I don't know what happened. But, oh, okay, I found it. So thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. I, I don't know how many students watched till the very end. If you one of the students who is watching up to um, very end, um, you will really, you know, you're really dedicated to, to this class. So thank you so much. Have a nice day. And I will talk to you in my next lectures. Bye.